Uh, all of these men had service, prior service, veterans. Uh, Burnside did an expedi expedition to the Carolina coast where they actually made uh, you know, amphibious assaults uh, in the summer. And that's where this anchor and cannon comes from. People ask about that all the time. And so if you see a Ninth Corps monument, lots of times you're going to see this. Now, they did not have Corps badges at Antietam. A lot of monuments have Corps badges on them. Uh, just so you know, they didn't exist at this time. But, you know, 40 years later when they're building the monuments, they're going to put their Corps badges on there. So I just want you to, I just stopped here because you can look right here. They have a list of the men, the casualties, and uh, the first two names, Kingsbury, Griswold. I also got to brag a little bit about the park volunteers, incredible group. Uh, you couldn't see this six months ago. They cleared this hillside off. You couldn't see the monument. So that's a really beautiful job by those folks. So the first attack on the bridge fails. Second attack on the bridge uh, by some general named mm -hmm. Noggle. <laughs> that's an inside joke, sorry. Sometimes we have, uh, I knows uh, John Hoptak who works here. I don't know how you would describe his relationship with General Noggle, but uh, very close. <laughs> he studied him his entire life, but from the same hometown. So, uh, General Noggle's men are going to try to make the second attack from this direction. They're also going to go through the gate. They're also going to try to go down. It's Maryland, New Hampshire. Soldiers. Here's a quote from the second Maryland. The brave fellows reeled back and fell back as if smitten at the bridge with the blast of hell. <laughs> At this bridge, the murderous balls and bursting shells were appalling. Destruction hovered in the air. Death environed it. The approaches were strewn with dead men. That bridge spanned the Antietam, but all who attempted to cross it found eternity. All who attempted to cross it found eternity. So we've had two major assaults, or two assaults, to try to go down towards the bridge and take it. This is all in the first hour. I mean, the timing, once again, we never know exactly. But at the same time this is going on, other units are sent to support that, to get skirmishing fire, supporting fire, on these, to su support these advances on the bridge itself. And where they're going to move is to the top of the ridge, where they can get a little better view, and we are too. Crook actually continues even farther north, and when we come down off the hill, we'll be where he comes out, and where they actually eventually cross over the creek. But also, I bring you here to see, you, see where the third and final assault that we'll talk about when we get back down actually is launched and where they carry the bridge. Ferraro's brigade is going to go down the hill in front of you. <laughs> How? Yeah. <laughs> so the final assault to take the bridge goes down this hill. Now it's a little less steep to your left, but the 251st, this is their line of assault. Uh, you can see Alexander Gardner's photograph here. He actually was about halfway down the hill. There's kind of a little shelf. There's actually quarry pits on this side too. They, what they did was when they built the bridge, they had the quarries on that side, quarries on this side, and they kind of built to the middle. So there's actually some quarry pits just like on the Confederate side down in there. I've never read any accounts of the Yankees using them, but there's a little shelf down there at the quarry pit, and that's where Gardner actually stood when he captured that image four days after the battle. So we're just going to take our time, continue, just everybody kind of take a minute, get a shot, look at the angle. It's almost on the same angle. It's just kind of fun. And just keep in mind, as we go back down, there's your line of assault. And we talk about the third attack. How much, um... How much suppressing fire would they try to generate here, over there, from here to over there? The, the two units assigned to actually try to do that. Uh, how many men, do you recall? I mean, is that... Uh, two well, regiments, probably 600, a thousand. A thousand? Maybe. Okay. At, at the most, 800. Yeah. Okay. Was it 35th Mass? Who's that comes up here, Brian? Was 35th Mass comes up here and supports? Remember, we talked about that. Pennsylvania comes up here. 48th Pennsylvania comes up here for the sum of the firing, yeah. Okay, so they're firing in support of the final attack. 48th comes up here first. Comes up here first, okay. We were just talking about that. Support the, where we are talking about the sum of the fence. For the second, Maryland, the 6th New Hampshire came out of the fence. 48th sort of led that attack, and they pulled up here just a little bit to the south of us. And they're providing some covering fire. Right, that's what you're doing. Okay. There's no, there's no artillery. No, there's no place to put it. There's no... Yeah, so it's too exposed. And also, uh, 
But look at that hillside over there that you're going against. Up there, that high grass, that's not even the highest point. That's just the, still really part of the bluffs that are defending the creek. That's just the beginning, and it's on the back side of that hill is where the Ninth Corps forms up for the big final push. The, the ridge line you can see up there, that little piece of green, you know, that's what continues south that we were looking at you know, when we first came off the Snavely Ford Trail. On the other side of that's where those two batteries were. That's the top of the beginning. Yeah, and it, on the other side of that is where the batteries were that were some Confederate batteries supporting the bridge. Also, Brian just reminded me how uh, Burnside and Cox were right up here on top of this hill trying to formulate their plans. And they could see up to the sunken road in the east woods. They said they could see all the way up to the east woods from up there. And the other thing you got to remember too here, and we talked about this yesterday, is when this is going on is when the, all the assaults were happening on the sunken road. It's at the same time. There's 28,000 United States soldiers advancing across a two-mile front, which is why we don't talk about phases at this, at least current Rangers don't talk about phases, because you had 28,000 men advancing at the same time on a three-mile front. Uh, now, Crook's men get lost on the back side of that hill. You can see how high that is, and they're actually going to come out right down here and get pinned down by the Confederate line on the other side pin for about two hours until eventually the bridge is taken and they will cross, they'll wade down here, they'll find a place where they can wade across and the only reason they could do that is is after the bridge is taken and the Confederates have pulled back. You couldn't have done it under fire, no way. But they actually will wade two regiments down here uh, after the bridge is taken. So we're going to circle back, go back to the bridge, wrap this up. One of our objectives uh, that we've had for the weekend and that was you have just walked the basically the full extent of the Ninth Corps assault which is part of the reason that we do these is to go to places that we don't hopefully you haven't been before and uh, to show you the the size the depth and the scope of what happened here on September 17th and we achieved that I know that was a little bit that little last little hill there was a little bit but uh, you can see where you were but we, you, you, that's almost the full width of the Ninth Corps. And that's a really Certainly good thing. like the line of the Confederate defense down here. Yeah, and the line that we did on the Confederate side too. So uh, now they've got a lot less men and they're trying to cover the same amount of space. So that's really part of the story too. Uh, I'm gonna talk to third assault and then wrap it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, the third and final assault as we alluded to up at the top is gonna come straight down the hill. Uh, Edward Ferraro's brigade. It's easy to remember the 251st, the 51st Pennsylvania, and the 51st New York. Uh, Colonels Potter and Hartbrandt, I think that's how you say that, Hartbrandt, mm -hmm. are going to lead their men down the hill. Uh, Ferraro, if he was alive today, he'd probably be a judge or a participant on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> he was a dance instructor at West Point, uh, owned a dance studio in New York City. Uh, his father was considered the greatest dancer in the world wrote all the manuals on how to do waltzes and whatever. So he's going to try to dance across that bridge with men from New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, we're probably getting on around 12, 1230. Here they come down that hill. I, I would describe it as tumbling down the hill. And uh, remember now, it's more open over here. So these guys on this side, uh, the New Yorkers are going to be under fire longer and worse. And then they get it worse once they get here because what happens is as they come charging down the hill, there is still enough Confederate resistance that they can't get across. So at that point, the 51st New York breaks to the left and gets behind the post and rail fences. 51st Pennsylvania breaks to the right. Where would you rather be? <laughs> yeah. And on a positive note, that they're firing onto the hillside with two very good regiments, very well led. And the guys over here have been holding this for almost three hours. And it was only 500 men, and Brian showed you how that 500 is just really, really <coughs> spread out. The concentration here is, what are you, what number are you, Brian? Two, two, three? I mean, Confederates. defending right oh. here at the bridge. Yeah. A couple hundred? Yeah. So, they held for three hours, two and a half at least, and that's pretty amazing in itself. But eventually they're worn down, and the, one of the things I really like around about this movement, it was, I think, as I understand it, it was a soldiers up movement. It was a... The men in the ranks uh, recognize the weakening of the fire on the other side, and, it's, and the men in the ranks, almost on their own, just get up 
and charge the bridge. And it's finally taken 12.31 o'clock. At the same moment this bridge is taken, the sunken road falls. It's interesting how these events are all happening almost simultaneously. And they cross the ford. And they cross the ford. So it's all happening at the same time. So. Uh, just a couple of quotes to wrap this up. Uh, here's uh, William Allen. He wrote probably the best history of the Army of Northern Virginia. Only problem was he only did 1862. He didn't finish out the rest of the war before he passed away. But. There was no part of the bloody field of Sharpsburg which witnessed more gallant deeds, both of attack and defense, than did Burnside Bridge in a fierce contest waged for its possession. The 500 federal soldiers who lay bleeding or dead along the eastern approach to the bridge were witness to the courage of the assaults. On the Confederate side of the stream, Tombs' two small regiments held their ground and threw back assault after assault with coolness and tenacity unsurpassed in history. <laughs> A little strong, but... Uh, but one of the soldiers here, I'll finish up, said, I don't know the name of that creek. He wrote this home, September 17th. I don't know the name of that creek, but I've named it the Creek of Death. Such slaughter I hope to never witness again. And I can't stress enough on what we're going to talk about this afternoon. All of this is prelude to the real action out there. So we had to get across the Creek of Death to start the action of the final assaults starting at about 3 o'clock. And that's what we are going to cover this afternoon. We're starting at 1.30. 1.30. Uh, we'll meet up at the parking lot. Uh, just as a hint, if the parking lot is full, uh, there's a the big grassy field that we walked through. You saw a couple cars. Just park out there in the grassy field. Or park in that grassy field, you don't have to walk up the hill to get back to your car at the end of the day. Yeah, there you go. So maybe that's a good idea, yeah. too. So uh, Thank you all for coming out this morning. It was a really nice morning. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks.